quick countdown, but what's up, everybody? It's Mark from 403 Fauna, along with Jason Radass Designs. What's up? <laughs> Welcome to the Fauna Topic, where today we're going to talk about morph market auctions. Now, our first episode actually started with the morph market auctions. That's when it was brand new. Mm -hmm. And now that we've both had time to experience not only selling, but also bidding on those auctions, I thought it'd be a good time to revisit it. So that's going to be our topic for the week. Let me bring up. So Morph Market Auctions 101, we're far from experts. We're all still learning. And there was a, a pretty big controversy brought up this past week about it, which we'll get into after we go through our usual stuff. Mm -hmm. So Jason, tell us about your week. How was it? Mm, I had two days off in a row from work. That was awesome. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen. So nice. that was that was kind of nice. Yeah. Um, I just keep watching this one pastel het clown female that I, I have that I sort of slightly, I don't know if I'm going to say rescued, but she came from a, a collection where it, it was neglected and seemed like the biggest healthiest snake in the collection so that's why i took that and um and she's she's really pretty for just a pastel snake she's she's uh she's really pretty and she had spent a long time with uh on and off with a spot <coughs> nose vanilla yellow belly pastel pinstripe Heck clown male. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a <laughs> bunch of genes. He's all mixed up like Americans and ancestry. And um he he's pretty cool looking actually. Uh only from stripe in my collection. And he I've agreed to trade him. He's just chilling now. He just shed last week and wait until when we make arrangements and and ship him off and someone will get to enjoy him and um and and they uh they got along great and locked up <laughs> a gazillion times i don't think that's necessary but they did he i'm sure he was enjoying it and and she's gotten fatter and fatter and eaten less and less she will still eat if you coax her a bit she will still eat um, but she's laying kind of funny and like yep. doing different things. And um, I was kind of hoping the eggs would come pre pretty soon. Um, but I see that she's in a shed cycle. And I have heard people, reports of people that have had snakes shed like a, like in around that time frame of laying eggs, like surprisingly. And um, but she's in a she's in a shed cycle now. So maybe i just have to wait longer but she's looking really chunky and and probably pretty close to spitting out some possible first clowns that i ever hatched that would be pretty pretty cool so i've just been watching her mostly this last week very nice yeah i know there's a pre-ovulation shed where after mm -hmm. they shed they'll they'll ovulate and then there's a post-ovulation shed so on and so mm -hmm. forth so Keep an eye on her, check on her every day. Maybe in a, a couple of weeks, you might see that ovulation. Yeah. But I had my first ovulation today, so that was really exciting. It nice. was a, a red stripe female, and she was bred by a by my pastel banana genetic stripe VPI Xanthic. So she'll put out some red stripe banana double heads, which should be really exciting. I'm glad to add some red stripe into that project. Uh, now. That male, he put in a lot of work for me last season, and I've only used him with that female this season. But my clown girls, my clown males aren't, they're kind of iffy, and I don't want to waste the opportunity that the clown girls are are showing that they're ready to go. But my young clown males are, when I check in on them, it's like, is that a lock or not? Because they're all buried under it and everything. So I, I'm not 100% that they are getting that lock in. Mm -hmm. But... I might have to put that VPI Xanthic genetic stripe into my clown girls. I know I did that pairing last year, but I might have to back up my Enchi clown female with that VPI Xanthic genetic stripe. So I just got to keep checking every day. Some of my girls 
like two weeks ago, the red stripe, she was in her water bowl and just really on the cool side. And I'm trying to do keep close records since I don't have uh, ultrasound just to look for clues like that when they're in their water bowl, then two weeks later they ovulate. Cause I have two girls right now that are just sticking in that water bowl. So hopefully yeah. they do follow that same. And in a couple of weeks they'll be ovulating as well, but I know they will, they, they've had some good locks. And also another thing for me this week, I did pick up another snake. Um, you did. Crazy. Yeah, I picked up four snakes from Kai last week, and I'm sure a lot of people saw that video already. But I've been looking for a hypo or het hypo male for the longest time. And for whatever reason, I have i don't remember exactly, but I started looking up for Trojan hypos and Trojan het hypos. And someone local here in California, RP Reptiles, have one available. And big shout out to RP Reptiles because the snake that they had available, I didn't know that it was just, it just got off a, a sale. And so I messaged him, hey, I want the snake. What's your zill? And he actually came back to me and said, hey, this one just got off a sale, so I'll give it to you for the sale price. So really amazing that he gave me that opportunity. So big shout out to RP Reptiles. I'll have a video unboxing for that next week, but. Nice. Yeah, that's that's an honorable thing to do. And and I've seen a lot of that person's ads from various groups and things on Morph Market, but I don't think, I don't think I've ever reached out on anything, but they've had lots of snakes over the time of me getting back in the hobby that I've been interested in. A lot, a lot of combos, a lot of unique stuff. Some, some, uh, somewhat high end stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I, I haven't done any business with with them. But that's a pretty good sign, and and looks good on them to to offer. Yeah, fairly that. local. Couple, maybe a mm -hmm. couple hour drive, hour and a half. But I think he's going to ship it out, so we don't have to worry about that. But shouldn't cost too much. Probably. I think he's in. They're in like uh, Marietta or something. Yeah, right? yeah, and that, yeah. Fun. I just I just haven't 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 talked with them. I did um I did get a snake this week. Oh yeah. Um yeah, I got um I wanted to wrap up a lot of my business stuff, just outstanding um pending things and and I have a couple of trades to finish and one snake to actually ship out still from an auction. Dude's been super patient and we're we're hitting it off and becoming friends talking about other life stuff and um i'm definitely gonna send him a freebie he seems pretty excited about that and i have a uh, a couple snakes that a couple less mouths to feed right now actually would be fine so he's he's gonna be a really really happy customer and stay friends too so it's pretty cool um but i i spoke with uh bob vu and wanted to kind of wrap up something from i had a i had a snake that I got from him last year that passed away and we don't we mm -hmm. don't really know we don't really know why and um it was an important snake to me and super super pretty calico one of the nicer calicos that I've seen in person and she just was like kind of almost like a failure to thrive I'm not sure exactly it just was one of those things it just didn't work out and you know, with the whole tattoo promotion thing and stuff, we just kind of comboed it up and it was it was hard to figure out a snake. And so I just decided, hey, just just send me something. I'm just wrapping up lots of stuff and, you know, I don't need any future discounts or anything. Just just send me anything along these lines or these lines, whatever you pick. You got lots of stuff. And he sent me a snake. I had no idea what it was going to be. I saw the like um, the shipping update or whatever on my phone, and it was like a one pound box. So I was like, oh, well, it's a pretty small snake. And uh, and that was kind of cool to have an unboxing of a snake from from somebody who's got lots of cool stuff and have no idea what it is. <laughs> I, was, I should have recorded it, but I just thought, well, I'll just pull it out and I, I opened it up and, and it is a pretty little snake, but I don't really know exactly what it is other than it was like clearly inchy. And, um, and, it, and so I had to message him. He's like, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, I thought I messaged you what it was. And, 
and I was like, okay, so what, what am I dealing with here? What is it? <laughs> and it was, um, a desert ghost, Enchi, um, pastel, I would imagine, um, het pied boy. Oh, wow. Nice. Like a, a juvenile. He's pretty well started doesn't necessarily fit any of my plans although making dg pides would be pretty cool i just wanted to to wrap stuff up and 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 get i have some else some snakes that are owed from that i've paid off from other people and i'm just patiently waiting i'll probably start bugging people to wrap that up and it was cool to get a new snake and he he's pretty cute he's pretty cute and uh, he's settling in right now and i'll feed him probably tomorrow or the next day and uh but yeah new snake cool Those, that's always fun okay hey let's get to our shout out of the week because he is here in our audience tonight no oh, <laughs> that is kike from bosa balls or bosa reptiles huge supporter of our community has a wide variety of animals i love watching his videos that he posts on instagram and just an overall great guy. What do you think about Kike? He is a supporter of everything reptile related. And um, uh, he's just a, a fun personality, very outgoing and very friendly. And, and he's kind of like, you know, uh, somebody that shows up at a party and everybody knows that guy. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's going on? You want a beer? And um, yeah, he, he's fun and uh, has a lot of enthusiasm, is branching out and taking care of lots of different reptiles. And and when I used to have tons of stuff, I, I remember that feeling of just like picking something new, something totally different. And then you, you learn, you get to do all sorts of research and learn about how to take care of it. And, and it, it, uh, it expands your, your experience. And, and he seems to be having a lot of fun taming down blood pythons and carpets and having all sorts of cool stuff not just uh not just ball pythons and and uh and he's just really he's really nice he's really nice definitely is and he works with nanny or carnage so big mm -hmm. shout out to kike of bosa balls now if you want a shout out you will correctly answer our problem of the week which is coming up next so everybody who answers it correctly or the first person that answers it correctly gets a shout out on next week's episode and also get becomes eligible for a snake from either myself or you or both. We'll give you a choice. So Nanny Gang or Carnage, both great names, whatever works. And so I'll put up this, this question. This one's for the old school people in the chat here. So good luck with it. Remember, if you have one already, you are not eligible, but feel free to participate. And the first person who this is it correctly that hasn't won before will be our shout out of next week's episode. So let's pull up our problem of the week. So this website of ball python history, and this was before social media, has been completely wiped out and is now but a memory. So A, Bush League Breeders Club, B, kingsnake.com, C, Fauna Classifieds, or D, Ralph Davis Reptiles. Now, I know you you go back. Are you familiar with these four websites um, here? Um, yeah, except for um, maybe one. So then, like, you know, when you're taking tests in school and maybe you didn't do all your homework, but you're pretty smart and have good comprehension, so you can kind of, like, figure out by deduction what most likely the answer is <laughs> even though you don't know it 100 percent, you're pretty sure and so i'm pretty sure with that rationale <laughs> let's go through each one of these real quick the bush league breeders club they were i believe originally called reptile radio.net where they had a a podcast or at the time and their forum was the bush league breeders club and Man, that place was crazy. A lot of good information, a lot of toxicity if you could survive that. But mm. I found that site really enjoyable. Of course, kingsnake.com. That was the morph market before there was morph market. Pretty funny that I visited 
kingsnake.com yesterday and man that thing is still going but there's hardly any posts on there <laughs> but i saw that a locals one to me triple l reptile is still looking for ball python um wholesale lot so next year i might <laughs> look them up and say hey you want a bunch of these ball pythons okay mm -hmm. now someone did answer that correctly so straight blast ball pythons the correct answer is the bush league breeders club so the blbc as it's known is no longer around something about their server issues and so they've been completely wiped out and now it's just memories but the other one fauna classifieds is still going ralph davis reptiles surprisingly is still up even though it's it's not being updated but if you want to check out some old stuff from ralph davis that you can still check that out so did you guess bush league Breeders yeah Club? yeah that's that's what i did because i actually i don't recall with my my memory i mean i i am getting older but I think I would remember that name and I, I'm not familiar with any of that radio stuff or any um, forum or anything by that that name. I, I mean, it, it almost rings a bell, but I don't think I checked it out. And so that was, uh, that was uh, through deduction what I figured I probably, probably would be. I definitely haven't heard anything from them lately, so yeah, good jo good job, uh, good job, Straight Blast. Yeah, Straight Blast. We'll give you a shout out next week. And for those in the audience who want to participate, make yourself eligible for an awesome snake. Guess on these questions. Okay, do you have your rad ass snake of the week? What's I do. That? I do. It's it's like moderately rad. It's it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty cool snake. It is a newer snake that. Um, I recently got sent to me. Okay. So audience, help me guess here what we think this is. I'm thinking there's Enchi here. Thin eye stripe. I think she's pretty. She's like uh, visually not like a whole bunch of stuff, but um, I I like her. She's kind of contrasty and dark, and fairly fairly orange. Okay, we got a guess of black head here. Can we see the alien head patterns on that? Mm -hmm. It almost looks like. She has orange dream, but I'll yeah. tell you that she does that. not. And this lighting doesn't even pick it up, like how how orangey she is, like a little bag of cuties almost. I don't think there's pastel in there. So there's Enchi and there's got to be something else. Yeah, Was no. Blackhead correct? Yes. Blackhead, Blackhead was not correct, although she is very dark and, like, probably isn't crazy, drastically different looking overall from a Blackhead Enchi. But she's not Blackhead. She's not Pastel. Okay. And, you know, you know, like, Enchi can do some cool stuff. But I, I'm not the biggest fan of Enchi, even though I've had a few snakes that looked really cool with Enchi in them. But I just, I don't know. I just think she's pretty. We got a request to see the tail. Can we see the tail? <clears throat> we got a guess black pastel in there? No. No, but she does have a couple dots in the alien head. The Enchi kind of wipes out a lot of patterning, but she is a snake I mentioned recently that I got that is um, uh, Enchi Yellow Belly. I don't have a ton of Yellow wow. Belly complex stuff, but that's what's doing that like orangish and yellowish and somehow instead of being lighter she's pretty 
like contrasty. I don't know. I, I like her. I like her. She is het DG and not very far from breedable. She just needs to get really well situated, eating really good, warm up. And, uh, yeah, I, I like her. She'll go to the Desert Ghost Black Pastel Spectre and hopefully spit out some of my own Desert Ghost Super Stripes. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, she's pretty. So Casey from Goth's Reptile Creation guest, and she yellow belly. So good job on that. Yeah. Yeah, nothing too complicated, but makes for a really pretty snake. And and I like her, and I, so I thought I'd I thought I'd show show her off. Maybe like in a couple hundred more grams, getting like nice and situated. Then maybe he'll be ready for her, and maybe she'll be ready. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, I'm going to share a snake because I brought a snake to class today. Nice. And so let me share that real quick. Let me pull it out of the bag. Kind of in the same project there because she is Desert Ghost. Nice. So we have a pastel leopard. Now, I think there's Mojave in here. I'm not 100%, but I mm -hmm. believe there's Mojave as well. Desert mm -hmm. Ghost, and she is Het for Clown. I produced this girl. Yeah, she's a cutie. A lot of uh, blushing going on. There might be Yellow Belly in here. I, I don't know. Yellow Belly was in the mix. Mm. So. Nice. That's my girl. 403 nice. Snake of the Week. <laughs> Self-produced. <laughs> okay, in the news. Let me just tie this up real quick. But So our show today is about Morph Market. And last Friday, this... This came out, and if anyone caught Billy's show on Monday, man, he went off on a rant. He tends to do to, that sometimes. <laughs> I was trying to figure out who the participants of this rant were, and through deduction of reading the chat and everything, I was able to figure out. I'm not going to name names here, but I do want to bring it up. And hear any audience's thoughts on this. Oh, wait up, let me bring this real quick. So in the news, Morph Market hidden fees. So when I heard this brought up, I was like, hidden fees? Morph Market does that? But you know, Morph Market is a bunch of businesses on there. And as business people on Morph Market, we set the tone as far as shipping and costs and everything like that so it's not actually morph market itself but the individual businesses that are on there that may potentially have hidden fees so i'm trying to remember the whole story here but on an auction there was a snake that was put up and this was in canada both of the participate participants were in canada mm -hmm. and on the description there was something about shipping being $271. When I saw that, I thought, hey, that's kind of expensive for shipping. But then I think sh the person who had that auction was saying that shipping to the United States, and that makes sense where it would be that expensive. Sure. So the person who bid on it and won the auction, they were also in Canada mm -hmm. and had messaged the person putting the snake up now you can't message on an auction so they i believe they reached out through facebook or instagram and asked about it and asked about the shipping and whether they could pick up and they had agreed to do a pickup and at a show in in canada but the the one who was offering the snake was asking for the shipping fee the 271 dollars shipping fee for a pickup now, <clears throat> from what was mentioned, it was like a four hour drive or something for the person. And you know, for I guess gas and stuff like that, it can it can add up, but well yeah, sure. I mean if you if you like rent a limo, I, I you know, I assume they have limos in Canada. And 
like if you rent a limo and go four hours and and then and then back I'm like you know it's probably going to be 271 bucks <laughs> but that's you know that's that's a different thing or if, or if you're shipping a bowling ball like an adult size uh professional bowling ball that could bring the shipping up pretty high too but obviously neither of those were the case here yeah and they were both going to the show and you, i believe that person was going to the show anyway and decided to bring that snake along as well now right. we're going to be getting into auctions and things like shipping and but th the person who won mm -hmm. was worried about if they didn't pay the shipping then they would be banned from morph market because if you don't pay on an auction it's you can potentially get banned from morph market and that person did not want to get banned so he paid completely the shipping fees and everything but was kind of upset about it and mm. of course i'd be upset too and another thing was that he was threatening to use his platform which is a, a live youtube show that he has to expose the person so there was you know kind of a threat i could kind of see both people's side on this mm -hmm. and i believe that they could have worked it out without exploding like this mm -hmm. okay let me gather my thoughts here jason let's let's hear yours real quick on it well yeah i mean um interpersonal relationships whether you know it's um just between people or as friends or or acquaintances or or businesses like sometimes they can be challenging and and um everything isn't like crystal clear and smooth and people have disagreements and and you can work that stuff that work work that stuff out um yeah i it, it's it's an interesting dynamic i mean technically from one side you auction a snake it has a shipping fee it should stay in there like i'm doing a flat rate 271 or I'm doing whatever is going to, you know, what it, the highest could be 271 or 300 or what. I mean, that that's a pretty crazy number, um, except in certain circumstances. But like um, technically, if you post a snake and and somebody buys it, they should they're kind of obligated to what is being offered on. Uh, for for auction and that's a snake and you won and there's a shipping fee associated that you're also agreeing agreeing to pay just like the person auctioning it um is going to agree not to charge more than what that is maybe there's a tiny loophole and it's like you know saying what you know what actual shipping costs are or something i mean i usually just put 50 or 60 sometimes it's 75 kind of depends on the size of, of of the snake i mean i i just auctioned a snake the other day it ends a little while after our show and i put 100 on that because it's a, a little bit bigger snake it's going to need a bigger box i don't know if it's going to go clear across the country i just wanted to cover all my bases and felt like putting that amount and you know some people in businesses um selling stuff they really want to do actual cost so they really want to not charge more and not get hurt out of pocket for what it actually is and that really that rationale makes the most sense in business but um in these kinds of things like ebay and morph market there's there's sometimes just a base fee and you're agreeing to pay that really when you look at it by um by 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 bidding on that auction and um so there's that but then people are also reasonable and so is morph market so they're both in canada and they're going to a show they both you know um plan to go to that show i imagine and there's nothing in like in uh, in morph markets rules where it says like oh you can't like work something out where you can like drop a snake off or i mean i i i won an auction on a snake and the person is local and he just dropped it off in my house and i didn't have to pay the shipping fee 
they, he didn't make me pay the shipping fee of what, whatever it would have been, 50 bucks or whatever. He lives right right down the way. So, like, that that doesn't necessarily have to be disclosed. It's just meant as, like, parameters to be, like, held accountable to. And um, this person was going to the show anyways, it sounds like. And they pro they're probably a vendor there regularly. Um, I've heard of their name before, so... They probably have a table and and you know sometimes people have lapse in judgment or they just need a certain amount of money from something that they're expecting that they're gonna ship and then they maybe that's their rationale and 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 on that day um maybe the person didn't pay quite as quick as they could have and so they're just like oh well i'm just gonna you have to you have to pay this like we we don't know all those intricacies and details and timelines, but um, technically, that's what they're signing up to do when they when they when they bid. If it if it states it right there, two seventy one. Um, and uh, I'm a little bit surprised by the sound of it. I mean, I watched Billy's video. You had pointed it out, and I I like watching his stuff. And sometimes he's nice and calm and chill, and sometimes he just kind of goes off and and you know gets gets frustrated with certain things in the hobby like when you're somebody of his personality um and and somebody with as big of a business and reputation as him you're getting bombarded with all, all sorts of information and messages and contacts and sales and purchases and and sometimes something can can be frustrating to you when, especially when you see that you do things, uh, what, you, what you consider the right way and you, and you feel that you treat people right. And then you see somebody kind of trying to get away with something, perhaps, you know, sometimes uh, he likes to sound off on things and, and some things do need to be drawn attention to. So yeah, you know, um, I, I was fun. It's fun watching Billy go off <laughs> with the glasses, you know, and he's all hyped up on some sort of energy drink or something. And uh, uh, I was getting a kick out of it. I was chuckling a lot and uh, I, I find him very entertaining. But it sounds like if the information is what um, everybody's talking about, sounds sounds uh, understandable for him to have that kind of opinion and voice it. And um you know, we, we've all had different uh, experiences with shipping things, most of us in different hobbies. Sometimes it's big shipping, sometimes it's small shipping fees. And I, I, I couldn't count the number of times that I've shipped something for free or taken a loss on it just to try to make a customer happy and I just wanted to sell something and, 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 um, and you know, and then there's, there's other times where I've sold little trinkets and things on eBay and put a flat amount and it really didn't even cost me that much. So it, it kind of worked out on a, on a smaller price uh, item in, in the sense of like margin returns. And then there's plenty of times in hobbies um, or even, even like on eBay and different things where I've charged something and then I'll do what a lot of people try to do a lot of times is like, refund a difference uh, of shipping so that they actually pay what you were charged. And sometimes what's not always factored in that mark is like your time to go to the post office or to FedEx or to UPS or wherever. And, you know, your material costs and your, you know, your gas and your time and all of that are variables that sometimes people charge or don't charge. And sometimes things, things come up with that, you know? Um, so it sounds like to me that the person that sold this snake had a discussion with the person who won it in an auction and they were both going to be at the same place in the somewhat near future, as long as it wasn't like months down the road and they got to feed the thing or, or something, or they didn't pay quite right away and dragged it out or whatnot but if they're both going to meet there anyways and then you're saving the animal that you're shipping and the animal that you're receiving the whole stress of that part of the process not that it's 
not yeah. stressful for a snake to go to the show but you know what i'm saying like yeah. it, it seems totally like uh reasonable and within the realm of possibility that they could have worked that out and then that person only got charged uh for for the snake you know well gerald showed up in the chat he i wasn't naming names but vip morphs is here and mm -hmm. i hope you guys worked it out in whatever way but i kind of wanted you to use this as a bridge to share how we've done morph market auctions and maybe share some tips on on how to be a successful auctioneer or mm -hmm. bidder as well so let's move on here to our auctions so our subject this week is Morph Market Auction 101. We're far from experts on it. The Morph Market Auctions are still new and we're all still learning. And that subject was also brought up, as mentioned in the chat here on Darian's Facebook page. And I was reading through that earlier, but it's it's kind of blown up. And I think we can all use this as a learning experience on, on what we need to put on our auctions. Yeah. So go ahead and share with us your experience so far with Morph Market Auctions. I'm going to pull up your auction right now and yeah. let's take a look at, at how it's going. Yeah. So, yeah. You can click on the bids and some pictures. There's my freedom breeder in the back. That's like, I think the night that I got her. So not recent picks, not that she's dramatically bigger or smaller or anything but i like how you managed to get the iridescence here a little bit yeah with the lighting on the ceiling fan there worked out good in, in that moment that cage underneath her had like all sorts of hard hard water and like i don't know i didn't think the substrate was that dirty now there's the cage after i spent a weekend cleaning it meticulously <laughs> with chemicals and like windex and different things and then being paranoid about that so then rinsing the heck out of it with a hose and then dawn soap and then a hose again flipping it up just i i went a little ocd on it but the cage basically looked brand new after i cleaned it and that's yeah, when like all, nice. all all fresh substrate and everything it's all like virtually like all brand new stuff and um she did pretty good in there. She would hide a lot, Mark. She didn't want to come out very much. Yeah. If I fed her something pretty good size, she'd come out and hunt. But um, yeah, no, she's just a, a big hider. And and not so much with those hides. And those ones she wasn't used to. I got those from, from my cousin. They were like brand new. Basically, I had to take the stickers off and um, clean everything and put it in there. But I think I saw her use one of those hides like one or two times she basically would just burrow under the substrate and make like little tunnels <laughs> and um let's see how much your bids are at right now Ooh, 135 somebody else yeah bid it up 15 bucks and now what's that what were you expecting on this or what were you hoping to get well, we're going to find out, folks, after the show. <laughs> you can go to Morph Market and look at this snake and watch it in real time if you want. And I figured that a snake like that, with that type of age and size, definitely not full grown, but way well started and, and essentially half grown. And in like a couple more years in the right circumstances with lots of food and comfort, she could be pretty much breedable. Um, I, I figured a snake in that kind of a range, you know, uh, prices are different than they were when, when I was in the hobby before. You, I used to be able to buy rainbow boa babies from people's... Uh, from, from people's litters for like 75 to a hundred dollars back, back in the day. And now some of them are a lot prettier. Like if you go searching on morph market, as I did, as I was sort of looking for, um, a young male for her, like in the future. And there's ones that are like hypo. There's ones that are super red. And, um, I, uh, I, I felt I feel like the 
the value of certain snakes that back in the day were very affordable to me like have gone up like some things have dropped a little bit down from the boom like maybe corn snakes aren't quite as pricey as they were and maybe you can get a better deal on a king snake now that that's been really um selectively bred compared to like a year and a half ago or whatnot but um i figured that she's probably like if I wanted to buy a snake just like her and I knew it was healthy and reasonably colorful and I I, I would probably expect to pay in the like 350 to 450 range for for a snake exactly specifically like that that I wanted when I wanted it. So I'm guessing that that's probably like her value like at least 350 i would think and you know there were some bids i put it just like no reserve and just you know get some action going as i wanted to thin the collection out a little bit and um yeah i i expect it to go for higher than 135 and and i did put a hundred shipping on her and that's that's a pretty large like shipping price and maybe with all this stuff in the news, maybe that that's that's something to to consider. If like somebody wins this snake in California, and it only cost me like sixty bucks to ship it, we might have some sort of conversation about like you know once I know that that's the the exact amount, you know it's going to be like sixty sixty five bucks or give or take, then then maybe you know I'll, I'll refund them a little bit especially if the snake sells for a lot. <laughs> but if that snake goes to somebody in Rhode Island and it's going to cost me like $108 to ship her, you know, then I'm going to end up probably losing like 10 bucks in like time and gas and materials, you know. So um, I just put 100 and I expect the, the I expect the the winner to pay within a reasonable time. Like I'm not unreasonable. I've had people pay a little bit later than they were supposed to, but they communicated about it. And I was just like, yeah, don't worry about it. Like it's all good. Like, um, yeah, I expect her to probably, we'll see, probably go for like 300 bucks plus shipping. I'm guessing is what this will like last second, like, bidding award go you know it could go higher than that it could go a little less than that we're 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 about to find out in the next couple hours <laughs> okay i thought i'd share i do have two snakes on morph market auctions myself and i thought i'd share them let me bring them up now this one i haven't checked the the recent price on it but i was a little disappointed it was like five dollar bid and then someone actually dropped a like a hundred dollar raise on it. So let's see where we're at. But what we have here is a hin Mojave Hidden Gene Woma Het Cryptic or Clown, and fifty percent possible Head Ultra. I think there's more to it. I think there's there's fire. There's probably yellow belly in here as well. It's but, an interesting looking ball python. Yeah, it, it's really cool. It is a male though. But it's yeah. had a lot of interest in it. It had a lot of eyes on it even before I put it up for auction and even more so afterwards. Mm -hmm. but let's see how much it's at right now. 150. You know Ooh. what? I'm pretty happy with that right there. Now and when did when does that when does that end, Mark? I made a mistake here. I I wanted to choose it to end sooner, but we still got 17 hours on that. Mm. So people want your snake more than they want my snake. <laughs> so after that, I put a $75 shipping charge on that. Mm -hmm. And just like you, if it ends up going in California and it's 60 bucks, I'll, I'll lower that. But yeah, I just shipped a snake to Massachusetts and that cost me $109 on red line shipping. So See? if I was hoping that, you know, at least the bids would allow shipping to be paid and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm there already. So I'm happy with that. But my yeah. other one, that one was really low. We're going to take a look at it right now. And let's see if it at least covered shipping. So this is a Mojave hit cryptic or clown. 66% possible hit ultramel and 50% possible hit hypo. It's a girl. Yeah. I was actually thinking of 
just bundling them together and just make it shipping to one person really easy. If this one doesn't go for more, maybe that would have been a better idea. Let's see. 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so along with the 75 shipping, 75, 85, 95. If it goes to the East Coast, it's not going to cover shipping yet, but we still got 17 hours on that. It's kind of a cool little snake to raise. Like you have possibilities with it. Everybody gets so caught up in like, ah, uh, I don't want anything that's not het for something, or I don't want anything that's not double visual with coat arms and blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like, like Mojave is one of yeah. my very favorite ball python genes, just as it is. And so, you know, Mystic and Mojave's, they're, they're not worth as much as they were, a, you know, two and a half years ago or whatnot. But like, I, the, it's, it's one of my very favorite genes and, and some of my favorite snakes are big adult Mojave's and I've had uh, quite a few of them. And, um, when you have all these other things, you're not worried. So you more so want like a really nice pet that you're really going to cater to and take extra good care of. Like a Mojave is going to stand the test of time. In, in my opinion, for a long lived ball Python, that's going to be cool looking and, to have all these other possible hit ultra male and hypo and different things in it, I think is like, you know, a nice little risk to take. I sold on purpose a snake on the auction block. We had many episodes back had like talked about it where I wanted to try to do a whole bunch of things that I didn't think would work on purpose. Put a snake that isn't as valuable, put it at a, ended at a bad time of day and, all, all sorts of stuff. And that snake was a hundred percent het albino and hypo and uh, also a girl. And she sold for $35 plus whatever the shipping was. I think it came out to like a total of like, I don't know, $85 sale or I don't know, somewhere in that kind of area. It kind of sold super cheap, but it's going to be a really cool snake. Uh, is really, really, uh, really, really super spunky and healthy, but not like mean. And and it's going to be a nice big Mojave ball python female breeder someday if somebody chooses that. So, you know, yours will probably go up a little bit more, I think, than 20 bucks. Hopefully. But, you know, I think I've I've made at least shipping for both of these snakes. So, yeah. And it's still got some time, and, and hopefully yours goes up some more, too. Yeah, I expect it to. <laughs> <laughs> How many some snakes? People, have... Some people had messaged me saying, hey, I'm interested in that snake. Can you tell me more about it? it? You know, you mentioned that she's a little nippy. She has bitten me twice. And I showed her last week and, and mentioned to the viewers that I was going to put her on the auction block, try to get a little bit more attention, maybe, perhaps, like a couple people. Like looking at it and and uh, and I could tell that day she was ready to to get me. But there's a way that you can hold snakes when you know that they're a little bit feisty and need handling and calming down. Like adult Brazilian rainbow boas, if you handle them a lot and they just get set in their cozy situation can be like very, very docile. And then when they're younger... If you don't hold them much and they're frisky and they're really good eaters, they can be a bit nervous until you work with them more. Yeah. How many snakes have you put on auction so far? Jeez, I I don't know. Probably like I'm guessing five. And have I'm you guessing... made made money on all those five? Mm, well, you know, the little Mojave I was just talking about, I got essentially as a bonus for free as a clutch that was in an incubator from the collection that I bought. And that collection was so cheap that I don't even want to say. And so it, it essentially is a free little snake. So, I mean, I was able to ship it and the person's going to be happy. So I'm happy. But all the other snakes, I thought I did well on. I essentially made money in that like uh looking at it in that black and white way and you know you want to put interesting stuff on there like like i said and 
And even though that little Mojave you got on there isn't like, you know, packed full of genes for sure, like her ancestry has like options. There's a lot of possibilities there. And I think it's going to be, you know, a cool snake. You've hatched a Mojave Ultramel before, and those are super pretty. That yeah, could happen. I, that could happen for that. Honestly, person. with that girl that's on auction right now, she's really bright, and you know it's kind of hard to capture on pictures. But I think mm -hmm. definitely she'll prove for either ult, head Ultramel or head Ghost. And mm -hmm. early on in the auction, when there was absolutely no bids after like twenty four hours, I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. um, if she stays with me, I'm just gonna test her out and and see. But someone has bid. Now there's no way that you can take a snake off auction is there i i don't i don't believe so i mean if a snake gets no bids i i mean i should know the answer to these questions but like if a snake gets no bids i that makes me wonder if you can pull it that's how a lot of auctions do work but um so to try to prevent somebody from just bidding five bucks in the last five minutes and then you like lose lose this item and it's not worth it like but um essentially you can't change anything like i had a very small typo in 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 uh in the description in my snake and i went back figuring that i i could i could change it i i'm just like a little ocd about that and i had typed it out really quick and then it's like, nope, you can't change anything about your ad at all during the auction process. And it is a little thing popped up on Morph Market. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. No big deal. Everybody knows what, what it meant. And I know Aaron's been super successful with his auctions. I see him put up lots of like 1.4 or something, and he managed to get those sold. And I'm thinking of using that in the future, especially next year where – a lot of my pairings this year are, let's say, I, I have a hit puzzle and I have these big females that can produce 10 to 12 eggs. And I'm hoping that, you know, half of them are hit puzzle, but then a lot of them are not going to be hit puzzle. So I'm hoping that I could just put those up as lots and get those sold. But so far, yeah. I think. Go ahead. A f well, uh, a few weeks ago, there were um, multiple people um putting putting on the auction block like groups of adults it's almost like people were testing that strategy out you know and um you'll see people kind of do things like that like carefully on instagram or facebook but like you know putting um groups of like four or five like breeder females thinking that well here's somebody's chance to potentially get this you know pretty low price on average for picking up four or five snakes that are like most of them will be proven breeders maybe one of them didn't go last year maybe one of them has never laid eggs before and it, and it it's a little bit enticing and you know especially if you just put like no reserve People are like, well, those four breeder females, I got like a desert ghost male or I got this puzzle male or I got this, you know, whatever. And thinking that you could just, you know, get some some hets out of it. And uh, the, they seem to do pretty good in the like four snake group range of like three to six hundred dollars. I've seen a lot of success with that way. People at least are placing animals that maybe they just laid eggs a few months ago, they got them eating, they just want to move on from it. And then they just give someone like a bundle opportunity. You got tub space, you're, you're setting up infrastructure, you want, you want some like breeder girls, boom. The markets come down a little bit. These snakes would take a lot to raise up for, you know, three, four, five years, whatnot. And, and here's a good price. Like it's, it's a good strategy. It's a pretty good strategy, I feel. But the shipping price is usually higher in those groupings. So it's usually yeah. like $150 shipping, flat rate kind of a, a deal. I've seen some actually on, you know, from this previous topic, it's interesting, like that were like 200 bucks. 
And I was like, whoa, that's a lot for shipping. Uh, I won't mm -hmm. be bidding on that. <laughs> but but there's a reason for it because the box is heavier. And I mean, I sent a package of 10 ball pythons of mixed sizes, but a lot of them pretty good size, to Florida from California in a trade. And I used like, uh, I believe if I remember correctly, I used like a red line discount code. And it came out to be like, like, I don't know, a, a hundred and seventy dollars maybe it was that much it was it was up there it was a it was a big big price maybe 165 something like that and that's with like the discount and um that made it a, a little bit more palatable to me but that was like a 15 pound box i think yeah i wanted to share this particular auction that I saw, which kind of deals with what we've been talking about of lots of snakes here. And so this one, and I let's talk a little bit about auctions that are, I don't want to necessarily, necessarily say the word bad, but poor auctions, the way they're, they're done. And I thought this was an example of a poor one, but maybe looking at the money here, it's, it's good for them. But Let's read the description here. Six snakes deal, great genetics, mm -hmm. all pythons. Now, the mm -hmm. problem I had with this particular ad was the description was, um, it was all over the place or didn't have any periods. Yeah. It was just kind of hard to read and follow. And I had to take like a piece of paper out to write down exactly what were, were on sale here. And looking at the last part here, which is the most interesting snake they have here, they didn't even picture it. It says they're, they have this assassin project and they're going to include that, but didn't include a picture of picture of the assassin. So I thought that was a little mm -hmm. weird. So $70, nine bids. Let's see what they're charging for shipping here. I don't want to pull their name up, but $125 shipping for six snakes and $70. So I don't know if they'll necessarily get the value on this particular lot here, but you know, maybe they just want to free up space in the rack. What do you that's think about it, That's what it looks like. People change directions. They acquire stuff. They think they're getting a good deal. There's possibilities. Like, I love possibilities. Possibilities are endless. Like, you know, I, I, I feel like um, sometimes people give up on certain projects. I, I heard somebody say that about one of their friends in a podcast just last week that I uh, was listening to about how sometimes people will raise stuff up and then they'll just kind of be like, oh, no, I don't really want to do that. I kind of really want now, two years later, this gene or this species. And I just need a quick buck because I haven't saved money very well and I want something really bad. So I'm just going to sacrifice all this stuff that I've taken care of for a while. Or maybe this snake bit me and this snake's not the best eater. Or maybe what there's a lot of different things that people uh, consider when they're releasing lots of animals. And you can find deals in, in that, you know, like one of those that said it's like 50% het DG and stuff, you know, like, I don't know. Not everybody is as ethical as others. And sometimes you can just put something like that and maybe you bought it from someone and you don't even know for sure like that they're telling the truth like all of those are thoughts that run through your mind especially when I see somebody and this is not to be like derogatory like I'm a little OCD I do like dot 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 like Ralph Davis and different things like my texting styles is different I used to even be in this forum a long 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 time ago and, and, and I would, I would type in colors. And if somebody quoted me, they'd have to like go back and be like, wait, this is so difficult to argue with you before, for me to properly quote what you said, I have to go back and like manually change all the stuff that, and do what you did to change it to the colors, to make it look like the exact representation of what you said. And, uh, that was kind of interesting. And, and, um, 
But when I see run on sentences, whether it's in an ad for an apartment or an ad for a piece of furniture, or an antique or a snake or a post on Instagram or Facebook, and it's just like that, like that immediately, like it's almost like a red flag. It just like you don't have either the vocabulary, punctuation, attention span, like the patience to like type out clear, concise, you know, sentences and paragraphs without just jumbling it all together to the eye. I mean, it just like I. I almost just am not interested just in that period, which sounds a little like, I don't know, maybe a little judgy or something, but it's just an indicator to me of somebody's meticulousness or lack there of it, you know, the care and the patience to um, type something out. And I remember Darian had said, oh, maybe it was a couple months ago, something about just morph market ads in general and about people could do better and 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 build more customer confidence by simply putting a description <laughs> all you got to do is just say a little thing and put your personality out there a little bit you don't have to have a whole bunch of jokes or you know just go on this whole history on this just like like regular snake but the more you word something and you try to sell something, it's salesmanship. It builds customer confidence. It's communication. And, and all of that factors in to what bids that you get, in this case, in a, a group auction lot, in my yeah. opinion. I, I agree with what you said there. Um, spelling, grammar, things like that, those are a big part that I look through when I'm looking at an ad. I really wanna see the pairing that produces snake, especially on snakes that potentially may have other genes in it. And yeah, yeah. any final thoughts on tips or morph market auctions? Has it been a po positive experience for you? I, I do, like everyone was so paranoid about it at first. And um oh, doomsday, this is going to ruin the hobby or this section of it. Oh, you know, and it, it, it really, in my opinion, so far, again, I'll say further down the line, so far still has been a good influx of attention and movement and gets people to see like, what else do you have? Like, like if I'm really interested in a snake, that somebody puts in the auction, like maybe I'm not going to really bid on that. Or maybe I bid on it and I don't win. I don't go look and see what else they have in their collection. Maybe they got more from that clutch and I can go and look, you know, Morph Market has all that uh, potential data. Now if people enter like a whole clutch and, and parents, you know, like I haven't read many chats tonight. I've been trying to get better about that, but tonight it's just kind of zoning out and, but I saw that Aaron's down there and he watches the show a lot. And if you go to his morph market, Beast Morphs, you'll, you'll see all sorts of parents and, and, and clutches and siblings. And this one's a keeper and this one's on hold and this one's for sale. Like it, it, um, it draws attention. So he put a, uh, um, black head. 100% het hypo, 100% het pied male up. I thought I remembered he he had two of them and he had, I think maybe put one up and then the person didn't pay or something. Because I think that's the same one. They both look really cool. But some black heads are just more black in their head and darker. And that mm -hmm. one's really cool looking. And I was, I was interested in that because I have a bell that is possibly holding the niola gene you just can't see it it's a 50 50 shot and she's het pied and het hypo and she'll probably be able to breed later this year if i power her up a bit and if i raise that guy up who who knows maybe he he also could or maybe it'd have to wait till next spring but that could produce the potential of um 
of a black head Mojave, because all the babies would be Mojave, hypopied that could maybe even be Nyala also, like a coin flip shot of, of, of that. And, and I've seen blackhead hypo um, Mojave pieds and they're, they're really cool looking. So I was considering actually that snake that he has um, posted up, up on there. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, the auctions are still fun. I, I've been checking them out the last couple of days a little bit. And I've been considering putting uh, a few more things on there. And, you know, I put a Brazilian rainbow boa. Well, lots of people have eyes on the ball python auctions. <laughs> hundreds yeah. and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, maybe even thousands, you know. And But, like, how many people are watching the rainbow boa auctions? There's no other rainbow boas available yeah. on auction right now. So, <laughs> you yeah, know, okay. so... But yeah, you know, and, and like uh, sometimes I look at the leopard gecko ones and just ones for other for other reptiles, reptiles just for fun. And um, yeah, I think that they've been a good flow of traffic and, and they're just fun for me to watch. I, I, I enjoy them. Yeah, and Definitely seeing fun. seeing the little last second battles is pretty fun. <laughs> it's it's one of my stops on my journeys through Morph Market. I check my saved animals if there's any deals or anything and then mm -hmm. i check out the auctions if there's anything cool on there and on looking at my latest auctions here i've just seen the number of eyes on my my animals go up tremendously so there yeah. are a lot of eyes on morph market auctions and i agree with you it, it's a great thing and you know what it's also shown me that people still want to buy snakes there's there's opportunities out there whether it's at a low price point or a high price point it's it's a good thing it is it is and i i couldn't agree more and and you are going to get more views from it and somebody maybe maybe the mojave that you put on there may, maybe it doesn't sell for you know what would be nice like 70 bucks or or whatever let's just say it, it only goes for like 25 bucks but that person or somebody else that was looking at it might look to see what else you got and might pay, you know, um, for something else, or they might even just inquire, Hey, you know, um, what, what else you got? I've been, I like that snake that you posted. You have some unique things I've seen, like what else, what else do you have? You know? And, and that is, uh, that's all part of like, putting yourself out there, brand awareness, marketing, and then how you deal with it is salesmanship. And that goes to building your reputation. I mean, really the lesson of the topic today is just how do you treat people? You know, how reasonable you, you are. Sometimes there's troubleshooting that occurs. I had mentioned in the past from a snake that I sold on Morph Market somehow somebody got really upset with me about not being able to ship it when I didn't like pinky promise an exact day and that it, it wasn't like set up that way, but they just all of a sudden were really disappointed and I found a way to make them happy. You know, it was getting kind of heavy and argumentative, but like I found a way to turn it around and that person gave me a glowing review and it's, it's all in how you deal with people. How far are you willing to go to make some people happy? And some people in life cannot be made happy, especially in business, you know, like, and, and then there's some people that are more reasonable about things. I bought a snake from Bob's Balls, like great guy, Bob Vu, like super stellar reputation, super nice. He'll chat with you. And like that snake passed away, but it, it wasn't for months later. I didn't whine about it and cry about it. I, I let him know. We kept in like communication just about other things in general, but like I was pretty easy going in the end, many, many, many months later. And he didn't have to replace that snake, but technically he partially did. I just, Hey, just send me whatever seems fair to you, whatever seems cool, just to wrap up everything up. And, and he was kind enough to do that. I didn't have to pay any shipping. And, 
you know, it, it's all in how you, you deal with people and relate with people, you know, and all the many hundreds and hundreds of customers, thousands really, that Bob Vu has had at shows, Morph Market, different places over the years, like some of the places that we showed earlier in the problem of the week. Like, I think he's had like one public complaint and he was so shocked that he had to discuss it with people because he couldn't believe it. And, you know, like sometimes you can't make somebody happy. I, I saw this like uh, really quickly, Mark, I saw this really nice young lady on on Instagram and I, I, I imagine she's on Morph Market too, but she she's on Instagram and showcases her like uh, ability to make really cool like uh, artwork and like um, logos and and different stuff in the bearded dragon realm. And and she just seems really talented and artistic to me. She seems really bubbly and friendly. Um, it's not easy breeding ball pythons and I mean, uh, bearded dragons and raising them and keeping them from like, yep, nipping at each other when they're young and then they eat so much when they get older. And she's had numerous issues with like the more, like the more her brand evolves and becomes more interesting and marketable and, and people are more aware of it. She's had all sorts of like little tiny flare ups of people. It's almost like being jealous or giving her problems and, and somebody wanted to buy a bearded dragon from her and then wanted to get another one to keep with it. I think, I think a pair, but they just weren't meant to be cohab. She wasn't comfortable with mm -hmm. it. And, and, and from the description of what the person had to take care of the animal and then to add another one to it, it was obvious like that that was going to be a situation. She didn't feel comfortable putting her offspring in that person's hands. And she declined the money because she did, did not want to support that. She tried to talk to the person about it in a really calm way and be like, Hey, you'd have to set up another situation and keep them separate and that person like flipped out on her and was like super angry about it and now seems to be making like google reviews to try to like mess with this this yeah. nice girl's like reputation just because things didn't go her way and what could have been a normal healthy transaction with good vibes um is trying to like be like holding a grudge about it and mess with somebody's like energy and increase their anxiety when all they're trying to do is like be positive and put out a good brand and, and good animals into the reptile hobby. And um, it's all in how you deal with people, whether you're buying or whether you're selling. Are you a nice guy or I won't use any bad words, but like, you know, or not. You know, like just treat people with kindness and respect. Uh, everybody's at different experience levels and not everybody is super smooth with how they sell or purchase or trade. And, you know, having a, a little bit of like uh, understanding and giving people the benefit of the doubt and going with the flow a little bit uh, plays out better long term in hobbies and in relationships in life so i think we'll end it there on your words of wisdom Jason. <laughs> wrap All it right. up Jason. <laughs> yeah Thank you so i think much, so audience for tuning in I hope Great you seeing everybody episode. again. I'll, I'll replay it and I'll check out all the comments. I appreciate everybody yeah, participating. That was some and, good discussion. Yeah, you know, and, and being here and uh, I'll, I will see you next week, Mark. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great weekend. <laughs>